it feels like this entire executive order is a reaction to the AI hype cycle that we've all been living through over the last year, where out of nowhere, ChatGPT becomes the main conversation uh, piece, no, no pun intended. Um, so Josh, you are uh, someone who works in marketing as well. Um, I am a, f a function of marketing here. Um, and very uh, interested in your thoughts around that. Is is this something that is urgent and we need to piece together and solve right now? Or is this just another part of the AI hype, cy hype cycle? Or maybe the ship sailed on this and it's like government can't respond fast enough. Yeah. <clears throat> I see where you're coming from. And I'm certainly not a marketing expert as much. I probably lean to the other things. But um, I think we've dealt with in our industry, people calling out AI as, as a way to improve their cybersecurity tooling uh, and position it like that. AI is a really broad spectrum of what it could be. It can be tiny, just one regressive query looking backwards, or it could be something huge, like more like the chat GPTs. Um, but it has exploded with that. And I think that this gave me the kind of warm and fuzzies of how many things it was trying to tackle. Initially, I really thought we were going to focus on security when I sat down to read this. And um, I appreciate the nods to all the different things, but there is a, a feeling of trying to, to boil the ocean and um, a lot of good sentiment without real um, real substance to back it up behind. So I think what will be interesting is what we see from the output of this report, right? When we've seen the different um, American departments that have been assigned um, certain tasks, um, what's that going to result in? Is that going to result in something that is more enforceable? Is it going to be result in... Um, in buying from a lot of other companies, uh, that's really where I'm going to reserve my judgment to see how much they're actually able to act upon. Um, but also, it felt like a bit of an advert for the uh, US government as well that we are, you know, opening shop for all AI people to come over and um, have got a good, you know, handle on all the different elements they could possibly think of, and that will need to be legislated or at least considered uh, going forward. Let me throw it back to you, D. The same question is: Is this actually going to be useful in the long run? Or are we at a point where just this is another part of the hype cycle? I think there's two parts to it. Yes, I think it's part of the hype cycle. That's the response, right? This is an impulse response system. Um, is it going to be useful as written? I really don't think so uh, because it's unenforceable. There's not really any congressional funding. It's not even like super prescriptive on, on things. So is it useful? I think it's only useful as a signal. I think what's more interesting is what's happening really at the state levels, uh, in particular industries, for example, how it's used and, um, you know, insurance, uh, regulators at the state level, how it's used in finance, you see existing kind of, um, regulatory frameworks that are, that do have statutory components to it, uh, in the likes of the SEC and the department of energy, uh, the FDA, et cetera. So I think that what it is, is it's just really a signal that says, hey, this technology is going to be regulated. We are not going to just kind of allow unfettered development. Um, and I think it's also sending a signal to regulators at lower levels, even down to municipalities and saying, hey, I think that you can probably uh, uh, take some action here uh, because it's needed. But I don't think that this, this specific executive order really does much in my opinion it's kind of a nothing burger other than just a, a desire to try to do something or appear to be doing something all right let me push back a little bit on that i, I mean i think i mean yeah look if, for those who are not experts in the way the u.s federal government work an executive order is pretty limited by nature right it can't do a lot to shift around funding it doesn't have the force of law in a variety of ways and it can be if the administration changes in the next election, uh, which is less than a year away now, this could all go away then. So it is, by nature, a pretty limited kind of thing. Um, but that said, it does, I think you have to see this as part of us uh, prep, preparing the government to do more, right? So that when Congress is ready to act, for example, uh, heads of departments have somebody on their team who's thinking about this, right? Reports have been written which will, you know, because of this, reports will be written, which will turn into the seeds of future legislation, future regulation, right? So it's not going to impact your day-to-day -day now, but especially for those of you in larger companies uh, in the audience who have, like, uh, you know, lobbyists and things like that, those folks are going to be very busy uh, responding and reacting to the fact-finding that's going to be done as a result of and that's going to turn into uh, real facts on the ground, uh, you know, in 
presumably in the next administration. And that just to, before I hand it over, I, I think that was my point, right? Is that it's not really an enforceable action right now. And it's really more of a signal. And it is signaling to all levels of government, all levers of government that you need to be thinking about this. But what does that mean? And are we headed towards an even more patchwork framework of regulations on AI development? And and I think that that's going to be a real challenge for the industry moving forward. I, you know, D, I think you, you raise a good point because we've seen that with the data privacy legislation uh, process, right? Instead of having one overarching federal privacy regulation, now we're on pace to have 50 individual state level privacy laws. Um, I, I did want to enforce something that, uh, or reinforce something that, that Lewis said in that we've seen cases where executive orders that ostensibly didn't have the rule of law, didn't have funding, became the law of the land, so to speak, because they weren't they weren't taken back. They weren't reversed. They weren't, you know, um, no, nothing was done with them other than them becoming the precedent that was referenced for, you know, conduct on the part of the government. And so I agree. I agree with both of those perspectives that this is a a signal. This is an indication to corporate America that this is if this is important to the federal government, it had better be important to you as well, uh, lest they step in and make it important to you. Uh, but I think that it would be short sighted of us to say. Listen, this is just a, an EO that's going to be read. It's going to make the news cycles, and it's going to be forgotten about by the time the election comes around. I, that that there's danger in that perspective, I think. Yeah, I, well, I do think what you know, what's happening in the set because of this and other places is interesting, right? It has kicked into the gears of, of the sausage making of laws that will be enforced by agencies. And, and if I could offer a bit of a global perspective as well, um, as the only Brit on the the panel. Yeah, they, yesterday we saw uh, a release of the guidelines for secure AI that was you know, jointly done by the British, uh, Australian, Israeli, so many different uh, governments. And that one, I think it had the exact same sentiment as what we saw in the, uh, I agree with Diane, the relatively thin guidelines on security in the executive order, where it offered a little bit more direction uh, and substance beneath it. So hopefully this is a continuation that we'll see, not just in the, the, U the US uh, legislation bodies, but also pushing out globally, because we all know, you know cybersecurity, AI, anything technology, it is it's global impact and global consequence. And that is a really good point, because that that what you're mentioning, Josh, and I would encourage all the listeners, and viewers and readers on the show notes to go look at that link there, because it does give really prescriptive guidance on how to build secure AI systems. And that is like a really great architectural primer. <laughs>